Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be talking about the effects library inside of DaVinci Resolve 14. So I'll be showing you the different features you can add to your videos using the effects library, including video transitions, where instead of having a sharp jump cut between two clips, you can add in dissolves, wipes, and other effects to kind of more seamlessly transition from one clip to the other one. Audio transitions, which in DaVinci Resolve uh, 14, at least in the regular free version, um, is mostly restricted to doing crossfades between your uh, different audio clips. Probably more useful for music soundtracks than anything else. Adding titles to your video, which although there's only five options here, you can really customize them to be however you actually want them to appear at the end result. And then generators, probably the least obvious of them. Uh, a generator is where instead of bringing in an image content, the program itself creates an image for you that you can put into your videos. A lot of them would just be for more of test purposes, but one of the more useful ones is solid color down there. We'll talk about that in a minute. So the first thing I want to talk about is video transitions. You have a bunch of different options here which have different effects, basically different ways of transitioning from one clip to the next one. The simplest option of these would be to do something like a cross dissolve. If we actually right click on the border between two clips, as we talked a little bit about in previous videos, you can easily add in the cross dissolves by right clicking on there and adding in the number of frames you want that to take up. That's where it's just going to kind of fizzle between one clip to the other clip until it's completely transitioned. We can go ahead and demonstrate that by hitting play, and you can see how it fades from one clip to the other one. And because it's not fading from black to the clip, but rather one clip to another clip, that's where the cross dissolve name comes from. Now, of course, there's lots of other effects we can use here. For instance, a barn door effect it would be where the center of the screen opens up and behind it is the second clip. So we can play that here by hitting space. You can see how the barn doors open up and it transitions into the other clip. Uh, the story is kind of the same with all of these effects. Um, you add them on in the area between one of the two clips that you want to transition from or to. You can also actually add it at the very start of your video. So for instance, if you want to go from the black of not having the video play to the first clip, then we can do that by hitting plus there and you can see it and when it doesn't have another clip before it transitions from just black into the clip. Uh, likewise, we can do the same thing at the end. So I'll drop a diamond iris here and we'll play that and it should transition out to a black screen and the video ends. Now, if you want to adjust some of the settings here, you can double click on any transition and it'll give you the different options that are available to you here, including the number of seconds and the frames. Uh, these are tied together. So if you increase the frames, it's gonna increase the duration. Uh, the number of frames per second, that's going to depend on your project setting. So if you have it set to 30 frames per second in your project, that's how the transition is going to work too. Now a transition can either be at the start, the center, or the end of an edit. And the place we can see this best is when we go to two clips transitioning uh, into each other. So if I click on this, you'll notice that it's set to center on edit, and that means half of the transition comes before and half of the transition comes afterwards. So we can change that by uh, clicking on the dropdown and choosing start on edit. And what that means is that the entire transition takes place after the first clip has ended. Now it's still gonna try to use uh, the continuing footage from this clip to transition into this clip, um, but the actual timing that it happens in is solely in the duration prescribed for the second clip. So I can play that. And to the naked eye, it probably looks about the same, but the important thing is that the duration is actually happening over here on the right. So the opposite of that, end on edit, means that the transition ends when the cut is made between the two clips. Now, when you do add a transition in, uh, you can see that there are transition specific effects here. Because these are specific to each transition, uh, we're not really gonna cover that too much here. Um, but just to demonstrate, you can add things like a border and um, play around with it, ease the transition so that it happens less at the start than it happens at the end. So let's actually show this ease transition. You see that it starts slow and then it ends fast. That's the idea of easing. You can also do the opposite where it slows down at the end by doing ease out. 
Um, but we'll leave it at that. Just know that there are transition specific settings. So in order to demonstrate the crossfade audio transition, I've added in two soundtracks here by Kevin McLeod, a song called Novel Noel and Smooth Lovin'. Uh, they're both jazz songs, and I'm going to play them as if I had no uh, audio transition there at all. I'm just going to smash this soundtrack into the one on the left, and it won't really transition very smoothly, because it's just going to abruptly cut at the end of the first song. So I'll go ahead and play it for you as it is now. And now we'll go ahead and try it by adding in a crossfade. Now you can see um, there's different crossfades depending on how you want it to interact with the audio volume. If you want the audio volume to not be interfered with, then you can just do audio fade 0 dB. If you want it to be a little bit quieter during the crossfade, you can choose minus 3 dB. Or if you want it to increase in volume, you can choose crossfade plus 3 dB. And those are, of course, dBs for decibels. So let's drop this crossfade into the track and we'll play it one more time. Rather than abruptly cutting between two audio effects or two audio soundtracks, you can have a crossfade in there to make it a little bit smoother. So here we can show off some of the title presets. We have left lower third, middle lower third, right lower third, scrolling text, and just a generic text title. So if we go over here where we have a lower third, uh, I mean a left lower third, a middle lower third, and a right lower third, you can see the positions of those titles by default. You can also see that um, the right lower third is right aligned by default. Um, the middle lower third is kind of centered between these two pieces and the left lower third is left aligned. So just about everything about a title that you drop into your clip is customizable from the font to the size to the location. So here I'm going to be editing the middle lower third title and you can see here it, it's basically just sitting there but let's say we wanted it to be a lot higher in the video. We could just increase the position to come up here and it would be at the top of the screen now instead. Likewise, we can take the second rich text element and note that in the inspector it'll show all the different elements attached to the single title. And we can increase the position if we so choose. You can also change the font to any font you have installed on your computer. So let's say you want the oxygen font. We can change that for both of these two elements. Or maybe we can go with something else, like Big Noodle Titling. You've also got other elements to play around with, such as adding drop shadow to your uh, text to make it kind of stand out more against a colorful background. Adding stroke to your text, which is similar to drop shadow, except it's going consistently around all of the characters. Uh, rather than being a shadow, it's more like a border. So let's just kind of add that in here. and. Uh, yeah, of course, this is going to work better when you have larger text. So we can actually increase the font size too. Let's try that. So I'm going to drag this up, and make it a lot bigger. So it's got a little bit of a border there. That's what the uh, stroke's about. Actually, uh, you know what? Let's add a clip in and we can show off drop shadow too for people who don't actually know what that's all about. So I'm just going to overwrite some of these track elements. So what you can also add on to your clips is some background to basically make this text stand out a little bit more. Uh, alternatively, a third option would be you can add in images from outside sources. Um, but let's go ahead and make this background appear. So it's already got a width of 0 0.9 representing 0 0.90% uh, of the width of the video itself. Um, but whenever you have a title, it's always set to 0 height so it won't actually show up until you have some height so it's got a decent size there and we want to actually change its centering location so let's do that and lower the height down a bit lower the width down a bit and that should be able to help your text stand out a little bit more 
Also with the background, you can add on a solid colored border by changing the outline width. You can turn it into a circle by messing around with corner radius or kind of a curved uh, rounded corner rectangle. So if you run into this issue where you drop on one of the lower third titles and you have two rich text elements, but the background element is actually covering the second one, then what I would recommend is you use two text elements or you use basically one text element to do both lines of typing, typing such as this. Um, but yeah, another option is you could just drop on a second text element it actually appears above in the video list because remember when you have multiple video tracks, whatever's on top is going to show first. Uh, so we can kind of position that up there and still use the background in the same way. So I was kind of hoping there was an option in there so that for the text elements or the titles where you have two rich texts that you could kind of change the ordering around for whether the uh, title shows on top or the background shows on top, but I haven't been able to find that yet. If anyone actually does know, uh, feel free to leave a comment. Um, but yeah, that's how I would do it at the moment if you need multiple pieces of text to appear over the background at once. And uh, add in all of the text elements you need, whether that's a credits of who was in your video or whatever. Um, it's very possible to actually do stuff like that and even more advanced uh, animations by actually using keyframes, which are controlled through these buttons here, um, and then setting different key points in your video, um, telling it what changes between those key points. But we'll be talking more about that animation in future videos because that's way too big of a topic to cover in this one, which is just about the effects library. Just know that that exists for now. And lastly, generators for the video. So most of these generators are just kind of test stuff. So, I mean, you can see what I mean. If you remember those really old interruption broadcasts where on television, um, they would play annoying noises and show you colors on screen. This same thing's kind of going on there. So I guess if you, for some reason, needed to test a machine or a television or something like that to make sure F all the colors could be played, or even better, to test when you export the video that all the colors are being shown properly. Um, that would be one way you could do it. Now, I don't think that these are going to have too many practical uses uh, for most people. I mean, if you need to add a gradient to your video, I guess you could do that. And uh, one thing you could do with that would actually be to make it reduced opacity. So if I drop the opacity down here, you can see it kind of becomes like a filter that you can uh, drop on top of your video. And you can do the same kind of thing with all of them, uh, but outside of having some kind of fun color effects, which you can kind of change the color effects in, probably not going to find a tremendous amount of use in most of those. But one that I think will be very useful for many people is solid color. If you need to add a color to your video and you don't want to just have the clip end right there, um, you can add in solid color. You can also reduce the size by using cropping. So you can crop the left side so that it's only taking up part of the video. We could turn that off. Um, of course, you can have the opacity be reduced. So it just darkens the original clip by sitting on top of it. And you can, of course, choose any color you want. Uh, you can play around with the settings if you want to generate some kind of filters for yourself. And that might be a decent way to go. I'm pretty sure in the paid studio version of DaVinci Resolve, they actually add on uh, more of these kinds of things, more special effects, more generators that you can use. Uh, I recommend you go ahead and look into that if that's something you're interested in. And the last thing we'll point out in this video without letting it go on too long is that there are favorites here. So if you find a effect that you really like, like Dip to Color Dissolve here, which I enjoy using, uh, I'll demonstrate that here real quick. So basically any color you want to fade between two clips, you can go ahead and make it do a transition. So here I'm just going to make it dip to black. That can be a decent way to transition between two clips, especially when they look radically different. So it's kind of a scene transition type thing going on there. Uh, but to actually add a favorite, there'll be the star on the right side of any of the effects that you might like. So if you want to add a favorite in, you can just left click there and it becomes a favorite. Alternatively, you can right click and do add to favorites. So just a quick shortcut for you guys there so that you don't have to go through the list every time.
But that's pretty much all there is to the video transitions, titles, audio transitions, and generator effects out, out of... But that's pretty much all there is to the basic video transitions, audio transitions, titles, and generators that exist in the DaVinci Resolve 14 effects library, at least out of the box in the free version. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found it helpful, and I will see you guys in my future video content.